Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. One of the things that the Salafis say about Allah is that He literally descends to the first heaven in the third portion of the night every single night. This is something that has been rejected by all of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah from the past, from the Salaf. It has not been understood that Allah literally comes down to the first heaven in the third portion of the night. And aside from Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah rejecting that, this is something that is rationally impossible and absurd to believe in. But before we get into why it's impossible, let's take a look at the response that the Salafis give. This is Ibn Rath means commentary of al aqidatul wasqiyah by Ibn Taymiyyah where he responds to the question that somebody asked that you know how is it possible that Allah is in the first heaven in the third portion of the night when it's the third portion of the night for somebody in the entire world at all times so does that mean that Allah is always descending to the first heaven is that what that means and he responds by saying amin awwalan bi anna Allah yanzilu fi hadha al-waqt al that believe first of all first of all you have to believe that Allah descends at this specific time just believe it. And then he says, وَإِذَا آمَنْتَ لَيْسَ عَلَيْكَ شَيْءٌ وَرَاءَ ذَلِكَ That after you believe this, and once you believe that Allah comes down at this time, then there's nothing else that's incumbent upon you to believe. He says, لَا تَقُلْ كَيْفَ وَكَيْفَ Don't ask how. Don't say this is impossible. You know, does that mean that Allah is... Don't ask, don't delve into it. Don't ask any questions. Just believe it. In other words, the exact same thing that the Christians say when, uh, you know, a Christian is questioning his belief and he goes to the church and he says, why in the world do I believe something so irrational as a God that is three in one. This is impossible. Why am I believing this? And the church tells him that believe this and don't question it. Don't question why we say that God is three in one. Just believe it. This is the exact same thing. This idea is completely foreign to Muslims and Islam. Allah says in the Quran in many different spots, Afala ta'qilun. Do you not reason? Do you not use your intellect? So when the hadith is telling us something that is contradictory to the intellect, then we are supposed to understand it in a different way, in a way that is, you know, that fits with the intellect because Allah is not going to tell you to believe one plus one equals ten. He's not going to say just believe one plus one is ten and don't question how is it possible that one plus one equals 10, right? That's something that's impossible. Same thing here. What are the ways that this is impossible? Number one, if it is the third portion of the night for somebody in the entire world at every single second, which is true because the earth is round and it's always rotating, it's always going to be the third portion of the night for somebody in the world at some point in time. This means that this hadith is telling us Allah exists in the first heaven and that's it. Why does he only exist in the first heaven? Because it's always the third portion of the night. So when he says that Allah is in the first heaven at the third portion of the night, it means Allah is always in the first heaven. This is not asking how. This is not delving into the unseen. This is not going into any type of understanding that doesn't make any sense or nothing like that. This is simply the meaning of this hadith. That if you understood this on its literal meaning, that Allah is literally coming down, it means Allah is always in the first heaven. Okay, what this leads to is disbelief in the Quran. Why? Because the Quran says Allah is above his throne. Now, if you are a literalist like the Salafis are, and you're taking this on its literal meaning, then you're saying that Allah is always above his throne because that's what the Quran says. And he's always in the first heaven because that's what this hadith says. And there's a contradiction there. Is he above his throne or is he down in the first heaven? So now, you know, when they say, uh, we ask the question, where is Allah? And they say Allah is above his throne. No, they're actually just making that up. Allah is not above his throne. According to this hadith, Allah is right here in the first heaven, right? So this is what happens when you take it on its literal. It leads to a contradiction intellectually. That is Allah there or is he here? That's number one. Number two, is this leads to a contradiction in the hadith itself. If you were to take it on its literal and the Prophet ﷺ says that Allah descends to the first heaven in the third portion of the night. Now we know that it's the third portion of the night for somebody in the entire world, right? This means that Allah is always in the first heaven. That means he's no longer descending, right? So when the hadith says that Allah descends, okay, maybe the, fir the very first time Allah descended from the throne and he came to the first heaven, right? But after that, he's been in the first heaven since then. And he doesn't descend every single night. So it leads to a contradiction in this hadith that says that Allah descends because Allah is not descending. Allah already descended and he's been staying here because it's the third portion of the night for somebody in the world at every single second. So Allah is always here, which means that that contradicts the hadith where the hadith says that Allah, uh, Allah is descending every single night. Now, these are the two contradictions as to why it cannot be taken on its literal. So now, are we going to take Allah literally being above his throne and take that on its literal and leave the hadith as a metaphorical or a figure of speech? Or are we going to take the hadith on its literal and leave the Quran as a figure of speech? Which one do you do? And if you choose to take the Quran on its literal, 
then why did you choose the Qur'an over the Hadith? And if you choose the Hadith, why did you choose the Hadith over the Qur'an? This is the problem with taking things on its literal. It leads to these types of contradictions that are unsolvable. And this is why Ahlul Sunnah has rejected this idea that this is taken on its literal. Because it makes no sense to be taken on its literal. There's no way that Allah is telling us to believe in something that is as impossible as saying 1 plus 1 equals 10. There's just no way that that's happening, right? Islam is a rational religion. Allah says, Afala ta'qilun. Don't you use your intellects. So use your intellects. And when it shows you there's a contradiction, then it's not from Allah. Because Allah said, لَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا That if Islam, right? If the Quran, if Islam was from other than Allah, there would be many contradictions within it. So if you see a contradiction, then that is not what Allah meant. And that's not what Allah intended. So when this hadith comes and there's a contradiction in the meaning, this is not what Allah intended. The contradiction comes from the literal understanding, so the literal understanding is not what's intended. So now what does this hadith actually mean? In this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, Yanzilu Rabbuna, that our Lord descends. What this is in Arabic is to attribute someone to an action as if that person does that action, when in reality that person is not doing that action. And it's only there to show the greatness of of that action itself. For example, the Sahih Hadith Qudsi, where it's being narrated from Allah. So Allah Himself is saying, I became sick, O my servant, I became sick. And He explains in that Hadith that actually what this means is, my servant became sick and you didn't attend to him and you didn't visit him or take care of him. And then He says that I became hungry and I asked, or I asked for food and you didn't feed me. Allah didn't ask you for food. Allah didn't get sick. But the attribution is there to show the greatness of taking care of a person. It's as if you were to take care of Allah. Even though Allah doesn't need that. It's as if, you know, it's showing the greatness of that thing. So when the Prophet ﷺ says, Yanzilu Rabbuna, our Lord descends. And we know that our Lord actually does not descend literally. Then who actually descends? It must be that somebody else descends, right? Such as an angel who carries out the command of Allah. It must be that somebody else descends because Allah doesn't actually descend. So this is the actual way to understand this hadith that uh, we know it's not taken on its literal. And some of the scholars have said, don't delve into it. Just reject the literal and apparent meaning because as Imam Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani said, that those who took it on its literal and apparent meaning, those are the mushabbiha. Those are the ones who likened Allah to his creation. But the path of the salaf is to leave it as it is and just say, I believe in it, I believe in it without asking any questions, but with the condition of rejecting any type of likeness to uh, of Allah to His creation, which is in the literal descent that Allah doesn't literally move. And this is also what the Hanbali scholars have said, as you can see, Qadi Abu Ya'la himself, when he writes in his Al Mu'tamad fi Usul al Din, he says, La ala wajhil intiqali wal haraka, that Allah descends and ascends, right? He's, he's above the throne and He descends as well, but not by way of movement. What does that mean? What, what do you mean Allah descends, which means movement from a higher place to a lower place, but not by way of movement? In other words, rejection of the literal meaning. This is what the scholars of the past have done from the Hanbali madhab, from the Ash'ari madhab, from the Maturidi madhab. This is the path of the Salaf. And if you were to try and delve into it and go into the understanding, just look at what the Arabs used to do. Actually, rather look at what Allah used and the, the way, the method of speech that Allah Himself used in that hadith that I mentioned, where He says that I asked you for food and you didn't feed me. I asked you for water or for drink and you didn't give it to me I, I became sick and you didn't visit me Allah attributes those things to himself but the meaning is not that Allah became sick or hungry or thirsty the meaning is actually that the servant of Allah became sick became hungry and became thirsty and Allah attributes it to himself to show the greatness of taking care of that person and feeding that person and giving that person drink so over here the Prophet ﷺ is showing the greatness of this third portion of the night that at the third portion of the night it is something so great for a person to ask Allah's forgiveness and to seek out his forgiveness because Allah sent an angel down. There's an angel in, in the first heaven that is, that is recording what everybody says and everyone makes dua for and everyone asks for forgiveness for and the angel is recording that and that is who is literally descending in the third portion of every single night. So when you see the Salafis say that Allah literally descends, don't listen to it. Why? Because it makes no sense. Don't just believe it and don't question it because this is not what Islam is about. Allah tells you in the Quran to question it. أَفَلَا يَنظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبِلِ don't they look at the creation of Allah? Don't they use their intellects? Don't they this? Don't they that? 
all to do with the intellect. Ibrahim salam came with intellectual proofs. The prophets came with intellectual evidences. Islam, the truth, is known by the intellect. It's not known by uh, just, just blind belief in things that are absurd and things that don't make any sense and things that are irrational. So when they say that Allah literally descends to the first heaven, don't listen to it because it is irrational. When they say to just believe it and close your eyes to it and don't ask how, don't listen to it. Right? We don't have blind belief about Allah. And if there's contradictions, if there are contradictions, then know for a fact that it is not from Allah.